Does that make me part of the Illuminati now? I don't know. Any kind of thing that you adopt um, or do is now seen as some kind of signal by some people. Crazy people, generally. Um, I don't know. There might be some truth to some of that weird stuff, though. Hmm. Anyway, that's a really fringy thing for another podcast. It's not really a podcast, it's a vlog. But whatever. Eventually, it'll be a podcast. Power of internet. I wield! Okay. So, I just stumbled across an article here in the wee early hours of the morning about how Facebook turned down WhatsApp co-founder Brian Acton for job in 2009. For job, not for a job. I know why that bothers me. Maybe because it's a British newspaper and they should learn to talk better. Um, yeah. So, obviously, if you've been following my blog at all, I'm not a fan of the Facebook. And apparently they own WhatsApp. Not didn't always own it, but they also have a history, <laughs> which I find really funny, of turning down people that found the apps that they later go on to acquire. And um, the reason I'm highlighting this is really to point out that uh, there's there's something in our culture that says, well, if you're not able to meet X Y Z criteria in terms of getting employment or a contract or whatever, you're not successful. And um, as such, people's self-worth uh, can start to go down. Obviously, this man was pretty chill and continued working and made a, a great product, but that's not always the case. So really, this should be used as a tale for anybody that's uh, kind of received rejection or whatever to say, hey, look at that. There was a really brilliant fellow who had, obviously, he had a bunch of credentials from what I've read. He's had like nine programming languages under his belt, etc. But he wasn't hired by uh, Facebook. <laughs> so, yeah. Just um, don't freak out and keep calm and carry on. All that trite, but useful jazz. Anyhow, we, we've really got to start moving to alt tech. That's another reason I'm talking about WhatsApp and apps in general. My friend messaged me the other day. Uh, and we got into a whole discussion, and I'm like, well, just use Discord. And he didn't like it because it was for nerds. And I wanted to point out that he was a nerd, and we, we debated that he was a nerd. And um, yeah, Discord is great. I don't know if it differs in terms of being more private, although I think it does. Um, it, it's got well, a way to post code snippets into it. And I don't see a reason to use WhatsApp. Uh, I think maybe it makes you feel more mainstream and therefore likely have access to cool people and cute girls or whatever but i say that's not a good reason to use an application especially for people my age i'm almost 30 <laughs> so that's uh yeah i i just also find facebook strange as an application because why why do you need to share all of that, all of those pictures of you uh, rafting or, or eating a burrito or something when you can just send those pictures directly to your friends through your phone nowadays? It made a little bit more sense when phones weren't quite as advanced. But now it's like you're just broadcasting that to a wide audience and causing all sorts of social... Um, anxiety in a way and there's you know i kind of don't buy into that argument so much that oh my god it's a dopamine hit when you get a like and you're getting brain damage from using the facebook no i mean there's it, it, every tool depends on how you use it i just don't think that facebook is that great of a tool um i like being able to use social media to share uh, my messages and stuff like in terms of what I'm doing with the Fractal Journal, but that's what WordPress is for. That's what YouTube is for. That's what all these apps are focused and geared towards doing. Uh, connecting with people on that deep personal level that Facebook tries to make possible is really better done, in my opinion. It's just an opinion. Um, is better done directly, face to face, or you know, through photographs or something on your 
phone exchanged or actually actual physical photographs. Let's get retro here. Uh, but why we need to learn to use alternative media and another reason to shy away from Facebook besides the kind of uselessness of the application is that it really invades privacy. And although it does do a lot in many ways, I think, to um, catalyze public discourse, it also does a lot to stymie it because of the way that it promotes certain kind of tidy, almost corporatized messages a lot of a lot of the time. And when people get on there, they want to kind of uh, feel a certain bon homie, a certain mm, uh, class of people that get it in their hip to social issues. And that's just something you don't want to enforce because it turns our already human tendency to throw vapid talking points at each other into an even bigger, more developed problem. So for those reasons, and I don't know if mine's is going to be better in that regard, but it just seems less geared towards that sort of thing. So try things like mine's. I haven't been on Gab yet, but maybe that's a good alternative to Twitter. The thing about places like Gab, um, is that I feel that they've become a basket for the deplorables. I'm just kidding. I hate that term, but it, it, it kind of attracts people that just share inflammatory things for the sake of being inflammatory. And I'm sure there's great conversations that happen on there, but it's like, it's almost like now instead of scrolling through vapid social justice type nonsense, you're scrolling through vapid, like alt-right nonsense and uh, no one's really having a conversation. So uh, part of the onus in this kind of paradigm shift that I'm trying to promote here is for all of us to grow up a little bit in regards to uh, self-development of our communication uh, and to start using platforms that respect privacy and that respect freedom of speech. You know, just because I just made fun of these SJWs and all writers and stuff doesn't mean I don't think that they should be allowed to say all the goofy shit that they say. <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, food for thought there. Morning news. Kind of old, but this article is from February 20th, 2014, but it's still interesting. It's still news technically for some people like me who haven't heard of it until recently facebook turned down whatsapp co-founder brian acton for a job in 2009 and that is just goofy reminding me of this book called the drunkard's walk where you know there's all this talk of companies hiring the best talent the best ceos that have the best performance metrics but these ceos when they get hired that have all these great metrics and all this great promise, then screw up and get fired and then uh, get rehired and their performance varies. Is that performance varying because something in them varied, perhaps? Or is it because that the market varies, that there's a lot of intangibles and when you're trying to make decisions about who to hire or who's worth what, it's really difficult. And I think the tried and true metrics of who's actually making the product, as I talked in my uh, previous video about uh, where's the value, payola, yeah, that's really where it has to be at. Who's making the product or who's making the product possible in what way and what's the difficulty level of that? We can't, we can't rely on, on credentialism. It's just, it's not a good method at all. Cheers.